morning I, been? Uh, it's been it, it's uh, started with me coming over here. Ah, I, I see. I, oh. I wake up late. I'm a gotcha. late sleeper. Stayed up all night watching TV. What's up? Well, I remember we were. It was after a show that after at a bar you told me that you stay up really really late, mm -hmm. like yeah. watching like what sort of stuff do you watch? Well, last night I was watching TV. Sometimes I write. I get a lot of writing done. Mm -hmm. But last night was TV. It was a show, an anime called Attack on Titan. <gasps> he lo he loves. I Attack love on Attack on Titan. Big I, fan. I'm like halfway through. I think like episode fifty something. Um, it's good. I like it. I told a friend of mine who's also really into anime. Uh, I was like, hey, I'm watching this show. Have you seen it? He's like, oh yeah, it's really good. Also, I watched a uh, talk. Uh, with a guy who co-created it and it apparently the message of the show is uh anti-semitic what which i didn't know uh and it just made me love it even more <laughs> no come on uh, i'm gonna move the mic just a little closer okay sure yeah is it because uh titan is another way to say jew <laughs> <laughs> it, is it <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it could be it's i don't know attack. I'm trying to figure out, I'm, there's like a wall, okay, you know, I'm like, okay, something with a wall. Are you on season one or season two? I'm in season three. Season three, okay. Whoa. So, I mean, we shouldn't give spoilers because no, we people shouldn't. should, despite We can talk about season one, the premise. The premise, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what is the pre I actually don't know the premise. The premise is that, um, so as you understand it in season one, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. Yeah, um, it's like, uh, you get to know like these three kids. And they mm -hmm. live in a society that's walled off from the rest of the world because outside of these giant walls are these giants called titans that will eat you. Wait, so the world is walled off? Um, their area. Their miles area. and miles of land. Like a small country. Yeah. Oh, is walled it. off. It's a so gated it's a, community. It's a, three different, it's a gated community. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm starting to... Like, I don't know. I, I gotta keep watching it to oh, figure out what's a happening. A lot of Jews live in but, gated communities. There's a... <laughs> There's a lot of uh, mysteries abound yes. from the beginning yeah. that you, I still don't know. I have questions still. Something that was introduced in the first episode, you still didn't, you still don't know it in season three. So, oh yeah, it's, that's the anti-Semitic secret. I suppose. <laughs> I, don't know. I gotta, I gotta watch it. I gotta keep yeah. watching. I want to, I want to watch the whole thing and then process it and then listen to why it's uh, you know, anti-Semitic. Yeah. What what that guy's about? What's happening right. with it? I'm all, but you've I'm, heard, I'm you've all heard the same up. thing. No, you've, I have I have heard I've not heard anti-Semitic, but I have heard like an allegory for uh, Jewish people. Mm. I have heard of that. Okay. Um, because there's no, I can't. If I talk about why, yeah. If you if you say why it is, you give away like what happens later on in the show. Well, okay. I watched the first two minutes of it, and <laughs> I will say I didn't like the part where immediately one of the characters is like, "The Holocaust didn't happen." Mm. I didn't like that. Part. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm still waiting to find out what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Season three. You know, you don't know what he meant by that, actually. I'm still waiting to figure out what the Holocaust was. <laughs> well, that's a different I don't podcast. Know. No one I knows. think. What is this podcast? <laughs> you know, good uh, question. We really very... didn't give you any context. No, no context at all, and I didn't ask any questions. I showed <laughs> up to the department. Yeah. Um, we are two comedians. <laughs> okay, okay. And gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Which you may be familiar with this premise from other comedy podcasts. Whoa, um, crazy. <laughs> where two comedians uh, bring on another comedian and um, fuck around for an unedited hour. <laughs> yeah. And then we give advice to listeners. Uh, oh. Not good advice. Sure. Because we're not qualified. Gotcha. And then we ask you a secret question at the end. Yeah. Fun. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And throughout, we sort of like ask you sort of like nosy questions about your life. Yeah. Oh, okay. Intrusive. Yeah. We'll see how I bat those away. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're not going to let us know the real you. We'll see. I All don't right. know. Do you not let the people see the real you in I, general? I don't think anyone cares. I think I'm just, you know, I got my own life and we care. You know, who I got cares? my stand up persona. Who? Uh, the fans of this podcast, Two Nosy Meerkats podcast. Welcome. Okay. Oh, what a wow. transition was that? A, wow. Yeah. Do you have a uh, promo code to <laughs> promote something or? I, I wish we did. That would yeah. that would make us more legit, but we don't. Way to do it. No, we're just. You can just like 
get a promo code like a coupon code online yeah, and then just start can. what if we just just promoted a random product like hey use this coupon to get this <laughs> yeah. thing we're not affiliated at all but it's like it's a good toaster yeah. yeah yeah you can order a lot off of domino's if you just google domino's promo code yeah i don't know if anyone knows that <laughs> even on their website they have great deals domino's <laughs> yeah. domino's has two medium topping <laughs> go on two <laughs> two topping medium pizzas for 7.99 a pizza it's a pretty good deal I love the idea that that is memorized. Yeah, seven ninety yeah. nine. I'm pretty sure or six ninety nine. I forget. Inflation. It's also you sound so official with just your natural timbre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You I'm do trying to do more uh, commercial work. Oh yeah, really. I want to be the voice of H and R Block. Ooh, Ooh. Oh, you'd be a good. I don't know why. Give I us think. a sample. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> know your worth. Know your worth. That's and right. the person who knows his worth very well is our guest today, fantastic comedian, Martin Urbano. Hey! Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done voiceover work in the past? Uh, Technically, small things here mm. and there, but I want to do, uh, I think I'd be good at it. I, I think know. you'd be good at what? it as well. Yeah. You have a very yeah. soothing Voice. Thank you. A very yeah. soothing voice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ha do you remember a moment when your voice dropped or like it dramatically became? What well, it, it was now? a couple days ago, and all yeah. of a sudden, I um no, <laughs> no, no, it just sort of happened. Okay. I, I I my voice still cracks occasionally. Do you have that? Uh, very occasionally, yeah. 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 Every every so often. One time it happened on stage. Oh boy. And it was the most humiliating moment of my life. <laughs> it was like it was in a comic book shop. Mm -hmm. And two comedians who I like and respect as peers were there. And, and one were like, who you and hate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm sure probably people I hate, but then like five audience members. Uh -huh. And I was like so nervous. And I hadn't done stand up in like a couple of days and was just feeling really anxious at that time. And I just went up and just fucking was bombing. And then my voice cracked. And <laughs> I saw them in the back just be like oh. mouths agape. Just like, oh, my God. Do <laughs> you see Martin do that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Oh my god. That was uh 2014. A weird year that was. <laughs> it was. Nah, nah, that was like 2017. 2014 was a weird year. No one is talking about this. <laughs> 2017 was fine. 2017 was great. Nothing bad happened um, that year. Yeah. yeah. It was a pretty chill year overall. Yeah. For like men's careers, like it was pretty chill. Exactly. <laughs> A lot of good people in power that year, really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... I forgot about that. <laughs> it is. I did kind of forget every now and again that he was president. Sometimes. Who? Obama? Yeah. <laughs> Weinstein? <laughs> I forget Weinstein oh, was no. president too. He's he was Secretary of, of State, I think. Oh, yeah. 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 He was really Wait, what did you say? His treasurer, I think, something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Lower that's anti Semitic. Agriculture. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to remember what I did or anything crazy that happened in 2014. Nothing that crazy for me. I'm, I'm having trouble remembering. I was in Austin. It was like the mm. middle of my time in Austin. Were you right. born in Austin? Mm -mm, no. Where were you born? Brownsville, Texas. Whoa. Yeah. Is South that? Texas. I don't know much about Texas. Is that very far? Um, five hours south of Austin. I see. Okay. On the very tip. Far. If you picture Texas, yeah. it's the very bottom tip is where I'm from. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what 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 was that like? Like, do you feel like you still have like Texas influence in how you navigate the world? Of course, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just telling some when I f was living in t in Austin. I did a gig in San Antonio with some friends, and we were on a road trip. You know, just it's an hour away, um, and we stopped at a convenience store, and there was a hat that said "We don't dial nine one one," and it with a picture of a gun on the front. And then another picture of a gun on the back in case you didn't get the gun on the front. Uh, and so, of course, I had to buy that hat and I wore it. And in Texas, people loved it. They're like, hi, that's a funny hat. We, you know, but I moved here and I started wearing that hat on the street and I got fucking stares from people. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, shit. Yeah, you don't get. Uh, yeah, because people were like, then what do you dial? Yeah. I, and one time I was wearing it at a uh, airport. And oh. That was bad. And the TSA <laughs> looked at me, looked at the hat, and was just like, so who do you dial then? I'm like, hey, no one dials you. Like, why are you <laughs> your TSA, why are you being all judgy about my hat? Can I, okay, be honest. Like, did you have that on absentmindedly, or were you like, I'm going to wear this at the airport? 100%. Like, I, I had a, to wear a hat. Like, okay. I, I was like, my hair was a 
a mess. <laughs> and so I had to <laughs> toss on a hat, whatever hat I had. Hmm. And I just thought it was funny at that time. And now, yeah. I, now I... You wanted something that made you look polished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I don't want to look like a wreck. Yeah. I wanted to look and like that's a, a hat that'll make you Republican. look erudite. Yeah. yeah. What? What's that word? I don't know. Okay. Isn't it erudite? No, it is, is it erudite. A, yeah, erudite. It's like a. It's a, it's a word I'm. I've seen. I think it's like well spoken really erudite. Ooh. Ah. You know. <laughs> nice. Ooh la la. You learn yeah. something new every day. Uh, yeah, it needs a little. You need the wrist. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Nah, then I'm good. <laughs> No wrist play here. Yeah, no, no wrist shit for me. Okay, prude. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is there anything uh, that you feel like with Texas that a lot of people get wrong about the state? Um, nah. <laughs> nah, if you picture Texas, you're right. Yeah, okay. You know, whatever you're picturing. What do you, what do you picture when you see Texas? Texas, I see uh, a lot of land. Yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot of, yeah. it's a lot of, a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, road and, trips are brutal. It's yeah. boring. Sometimes. And uh, yeah. you drive a few hours, you pass by a barbecue joint. You pass, you drive mm-hmm. a few yeah. more hours, you pass by a cattle ranch. Yeah, maybe yeah. a town. Very dry, very flat land, and that's what I'm expecting. Yeah, that's right. I went, to, you know, I went to I went to uh, Austin recently. I went yeah? to an open mic at a saloon. Oh, what saloon? Oh man, I can... saloon. What saloon? What, what saloon? was the name of the bar? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of them it's here not, saloons y'all go to? I can't remember the name. I remember that my girlfriend came with me and she asked the bartender for ranch water. And he said, you mean a tequila soda with lime? And she got pretty upset by that because it was a mean thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we proceeded to watch the comedy. And uh, some of it was, was good. And some of it was... Um, uh, people are pretty scared of trans people. People don't. Oh, is that right? Yeah, mm. people are. Conf- I never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know about this. <laughs> but it, it's it's kind of funny because that's Austin. You know, it's like supposed to be the uh, little weird progressive, the weird, progressive yeah. town, and uh, yeah, it's. I think the influence has changed since I left. Um, I you know I know like Joe Rogan moved there and stuff. Right. Um, so I'm gonna move back and yeah, really just, you should you should go see yeah, them. Really yeah. show them how to be transphobic over there. Like, yeah. This is this is how Papa gets transphobic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's that's why because in my time there it was less like that from my memory, but also mm. you know it was just different time. That was also just 2014, one mic. weird year. 2014, super mm. weird. Yeah, the I mean the other places I went in Austin were like so fun. Like I rode a mechanical bull at this really fun bar. And, nice. Um, I don't know. I feel like I ate a lot of good. I went to Torchies. The tacos. Sure, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's a place people go to. People go, yeah. 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 It's a place. It's yeah. so cool. That's good. I like torchies. Yeah. Uh, something I, I desperately want to ask you is because you have this incredible character that you've curated on stage. I, I mean, I realize, of course, this is actually your real opinions. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, this yeah, isn't yeah. really a character. No, but you have this, like, character of, like, the most, like, horrible, like, cancelable comedian. I'm curious, did you ever go through any stage of a different kind of character or was it like a natural, immediate sort of like finding that niche? It was always like that, but then I realized I should probably make it be a character. And then that really helped. Oh. Um, <laughs> ah. No. Um, I don't know. I think I was always like, I did think about it at one point. Like I was always making fun of comedy. Mm-hmm. Like just from the very beginning, just because I watched so much of it and that's the way my my brain thinks. Um, And I think as time went on, my definition or understanding of what I consider to be bad comedy has changed. Um, And it just became easier once like, like I just noticed uh, like in, I guess, 2017 that a lot of comedians were making the same hacky jokes about the Me Too movement. Like, you can't even sneeze around a woman, that kind of thing. And I was like, well, you can't. Uh, no. Well, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't. Because uh, of masks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's for, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I just once I that was sort of like a moment in me. I was like, oh, let me make fun of these guys specifically instead of just like somebody who's I don't know. I don't know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> what what were like early influences for you then? Like, what did you watch growing up? Mm. I love Steve Martin. You guys ever watch uh, Steve Martin's? I never uh, got into Steve Martin. Oh, he's the best. Let's Get Small is uh, one of my favorite albums of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to watch that. What, how old were you when you when that like hit you? Um, that's probably like 
middle school, high school, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Have you seen it's, Only Murders in the Building? Uh, no. It's really yeah, I good. watched the beginning of it and then I caught up and then never picked it back up. I it, like it. It's I, awesome. I, I hear it's really good and I'm going to I'll pick it back up. Yeah. You, you better. I'll do it. We're holding After you I finish watching An- Attack on Titan. Attack on oh, Titan. Yeah, I almost called it Anti Semitic the Show. <laughs> <laughs> Anti Semitic the Titan. Anti Semitism the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make that one day. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a stream of consciousness into a camera for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> an hour and a half of just nothing. <laughs> it's gonna be like what you do, except I'm gonna mean it. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> you know? So when when you first yeah. do you remember a moment where you first started like trying that character of like making fun of those guys and do you remember how it went? It went really well actually like mm-hmm. up, up up top it was um I guess it was 2018 but I I really I remember seeing it at Caroline's happen as it, it was at Caroline's RIP RIP um, Caroline is still Rest alive but the, the <laughs> yeah is Caroline a real person um, Caroline is a real person. Mm-hmm. And says that she's gonna move uh, Caroline's into a different space at some point. Whoa! But you know it's, it's hard out here. Yeah. Um, for it's such a shame things. that that place closed down. Yeah. I mean, I liked it, but it's Times Square. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. No, nah, I, like I feel I, I feel I feel bad. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it, a place that gave us all opportunities, and we're grateful. Yeah. <laughs> sure. D- yeah. Did you all ever do the? Uh, um, what the newcomer show what was it called new talent Bre- new- yeah. Yeah, yeah, something yeah, like yeah that's that. where i that? first started doing comedy lucas and i actually met well we met at mike's but we both did caroline's classes at different times in yeah. our oh. lives and so caroline's i Caroline's first- classes yeah they, yeah, they, they classes. offer they offer classes through like it was like caroline's oh, wow. comedy school oh yeah. Was, yeah. It, was it good did oh you, i loved it. Like it i loved it it was awesome oh, nice we've wow. we've had like our old teacher on linda smith she's like great linda smith. yeah i do remember the first new talent show i ever did at caroline's uh, it was like my second time doing stand up ever. I had not been to a mic or anything, and I was so nervous. And this the, like older gentleman came up to me. He was like, first time, kid." And I was like, second time." He was like, <laughs> "Don't even worry about it. I'm gonna go up there. I don't even have any material. <laughs> I love this. I'm thinking like this guy is such a pro. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about because it like felt so New York to me. Like this mm-hmm. guy go go kid, you're gonna be a big shot. This mm-hmm. guy goes up is incoherent <laughs> for five minutes. Not a person in the audience can understand what he's saying. The host comes on, goes, "Was he having a stroke?" Everyone fucking laughs. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it felt so bad. So that was my first time trying the new character. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 when you yeah, came yeah. up to me. Yeah. yeah, new haircut. That's yeah. why yeah. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. I looked yeah. older than yeah, yeah. No, yeah. when I I remember my my group for my class was wild because we uh we had a kid in our class, but only the first day he was like fifteen, and then he disappeared halfway through the class, and then we never saw him again. And so we were all like, "Oh, is he like running like a crime syndicate underground? Like, did he just make an appearance and was like, nah, I'm gonna get too much heat on me?'" <laughs> and then like we all like started coming up with these stories of like who he was. And then also, like, there was this other kid in the class who came through all the way to the very end of, uh, where we had, like, our end of class show. And then afterwards, he was like, you say you're from New York? I was like, yeah. He's like, I thought you were from Michigan. I was like, why? He said, your shoulders move when you laugh. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing? That's such kid logic. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so how, how, how old are the people in, in in this class oh it's a range it's a huge range. Yeah, range huge range there huge were people who range. were like in their 50s like trying it for the oh, first pushing time 60 sure, yeah. as well, yeah. and then i was like 20 when i tried it have yeah. you all seen joe firestone's special on peacock i have not seen her I special seen but, it, I but i think she's I hysterical she's i love amazing. joe and i love that special i highly recommend it it okay i might even give it a rewatch. It, it was uh really inspiring it's like it's like one where she teaches a bunch of old people how to do comedy <laughs> whoa That's awesome. it's it's the best and then it kind of like cul- culminates or it's i i don't think it's the whole thing i think it, it's the end where there's like a talent show like a uh you know a, a awesome. showcase or whatever you call cool. it um and it's it's incredibly sweet and nice, and it reminded me why I wanted to do comedy even in the first place. Yeah, yeah. What was the initial impetus to actually get on stage the first time? Uh, money and power. No, uh-huh. it's That's uh, right. I just wanted to. I guess I don't know. I thought I thought I could do it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When, when, I, it made can sense I ask, to like, me. when? How old were you with the first time you got on stage? Sixteen or seventeen. 
Wow. Damn. I forgot. You were brave. No. No? I was <laughs> stupidly confident. <laughs> I, I mean, studied it for like a long time before that, like oh, for yeah. years and like was working on jokes in class, like writing jokes and like the margins on my papers and stuff and just like really, you know, so to go up for like two, three minutes, I had enough and I was, you know, like given speeches at school. It's kind of like the same principle and mm -hmm. because I was so truly believed that I could be famous at being a stand-up comedian, it was like mm. that delusion like pushed me through and so it wasn't, it was pretty easy at first yeah yeah was was fame like a big driver for you as a kid were you, were you like oh i would like to be that i want to be famous because it's so connected to success yeah you know mm. it's like it, it, they both feel so related and, and it just made sense i, I also love Bo burnham i mm. love him i'm a big fan and i was then and i am now have you mm -hmm. met him and you will be no in the future and I don't oh. want to meet him. <laughs> oh, are you afraid of what he's like in person? No. Oh, you just... <laughs> he's, dating, he's dating Phoebe Bridgers now. Is he? Yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Is that why you don't want to meet him? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just... I, I, I like him. And I don't want to meet... You, you know, whatever. The, don't meet your heroes kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You don't want to have the illusion what if, shattered. What if he doesn't like me? And then it's like that's a bummer. But also, I'm I'm gonna keep doing comedy, and he's gonna keep doing comedy. So I might bump into him at some point. It's gonna but happen. Yeah. I'm not trying to actively in any way interact with him unless it happens very naturally, mm. um, because because I'm a fan. Bo, if you're seeing this, <laughs> I'm trying to think. And of he what, is. <laughs> and he is. I'm trying to think <laughs> of like what other professions there are where you're afraid to meet your coworkers. It's but there's a difference between like coworker and like. I'm not a coworker Here. level. He is. He is. You know, his special is the most watched Netflix comedy special. I really? didn't know that. But that there, makes there was sense. like something Pandemic leaked, one? like maybe like a year ago, or something. Yeah, his inside is like the wow. most watched one. Maybe stuff has changed now, but and it's probably like a lot of rewatches, you know, because yeah. it's music and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah. I he's, honestly he's huge. like would have thought Dave Chappelle's was just because it was so controversial. His was in the top, but Bo's was like still won by like a mile. Mm. Well, that's good. You think he looks up <laughs> to Bo Bird? <laughs> Chappelle? <laughs> yeah. Yes. The moment I was young. <laughs> <laughs> that's me trying to do. Bo Bird. I thought that was your Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to do Chappelle. Can, can that be the clip that you yeah. post? <laughs> we have to hold you accountable somehow. <laughs> when I first saw him, I was transfixed. I was bam. <laughs> <laughs> I Lucas is part black. <laughs> I hope that's clear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not clear from his face, but I hope it's clear from <laughs> his background. I don't know. <sighs> okay, we out of track. You're at Caroline's in 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in the m and store. You're looking at the M&Ms dead in the face, and you mm -hmm. start doing your new and character. Getting angry. Getting and you're angry getting angry at these at m &Ms. Yeah. And you should, because they're fucking stupid. Yeah, they have a purple one. God damn I, I hate it. Yeah. What for? Yeah. <laughs> So you're at Real Caroline's doing your character. How does uh -huh. it go? I wasn't doing my character that. I mean, I was like doing. Um, whenever I did a set on Jimmy Kimmel, that was um, like, okay, I can I can look at that and see the beginnings of what I was trying to do. And so I was mostly like doing that. And it was like a lot like cornier in some ways. I mean, still like dark and like mm. and and fucked up or whatever, but like cornier. I I have I have a bit and I was talking about this before we started but like my, when i came back from pandemic i felt like i had like so little material but the part that i fixed on from before that was the um the canceled comedian kind of like uh anyway I'm, I'm losing track of everything but i saw this guy go up at caroline's and he said uh, he said i'm scared to sneeze around a woman i'm scared to even fart around a woman now and i was like this is the worst shit i've ever seen i <laughs> i feel like i've seen other people like go in that vein already so let me try to make some jokes uh making fun of this specific man <laughs> yeah. whose name i don't recall and uh, maybe i've worked alongside him i doubt it i feel like i would have remembered um just some random guy i wrote like a minute of jokes of making fun of that guy <laughs> And I did them on 
uh, at a Comedy Central digital taping. One of those. Uh-huh. Have, have you all ever uh, yeah. done those? I've, I've done seen them. No, I've not done, done them, no, but know. I've seen them. I've seen them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a thing, right? That's like, I don't know. What what's the what are the what are the goals now? The goals have changed since I was kind of. My goal is to up. figure out my goal. Like I don't okay. know. Um, I want to find my my goal for the the year was to find like a home base where I can get up frequently. Like mm. whether that's uh like. A smaller club or like a bigger club like somewhere that kind of like like a, we were talking to ruth allen who has mm. like she gets up every night at brooklyn comedy club which is pretty new but they like sure they like love her and mentor her and really respect her so yeah how how is that place it's awesome brooklyn it's only comedy been like club. A, cool vibe. i've only been like a couple of times it's called something else old man hustle old, old man, man hustle, hustle brooklyn yeah, sure. yeah that's right yeah i there's a guy who filmed a special there a oh, self-produced special. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that vibe, or I is that think place so. that vibe? Because his special, I, it just sort of came up on my YouTube um, uh-huh. because I believe a lot of the same things he believes. <laughs> um, but it opens with just like, oh, Fauci, this, you know, like, oh, wearing a mask is for pussies, like, I don't know, you know, it's like, and it's just like the worst shit, and the and the crowd is going wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The, the the mics on the crowd are like pumped all the way up and there's like a lady there who I think was paid to cheer because it sounds but that uh, that's all I know about Brooklyn Comedy Club. Yep. <laughs> but but you're saying it's not like that. No, not usually. Okay. I mean, our friend is like a very funny female comic. So oh, I yeah. Very much not does no. not agree with you. Was what yeah, I'm sure, yeah, sure. Very yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, she's actually oh. actively campaigned against you in the past. Yeah. No, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, she that's is Fauci. False. Um, yeah. yeah, she's Fauci. Yeah, she's Fauci. She yeah. Is, um, she is so Fauci. it's not okay. that vibe. But then a lot of people have goals of like getting on late night. Um, sure. People want to, the like really good people want to get to like JFL. So that's okay. like JFL. what you want to work towards. Yeah. It is, is Netflix comedy fest, or are they a thing? Oh, yeah, you know? Netflix that is a joke. Be, yeah. Yeah. Okay. For are, me, they, for, are they doing another? Do you know? Oh, I don't know if they're doing another. Mm, okay. I have probably. no idea. I would I assume like, they probably are. I feel are. like it's pretty successful. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. first one, I I mean, it's Netflix. They're not going to do badly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They filmed a lot of things at their festival. I think that's how they made yeah. their money back. Yeah. Hmm. For sure. I would say in terms of like goals for me, pretty similar in that I am working towards like uh, just being able to do more sets at clubs right now and then also to get more comfortable with longer sets the longest i've done is around like half an hour and i want to eventually get comfortable by this year uh, with like an hour and actually have a through line of like an hour show that i could eventually like take on the road maybe go to the edinburgh festival with that hour nice uh and then yeah just get com- more comfortable and regular with traveling and doing shows around the country that's like those are my those are my goals for this yeah. year i want to go on the road really bad yeah as well yeah. same yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, it's coming back out there, but it seems like there's a lot of there's a lot more people with big followings um, out on the road now, um, where it used to be kind of more like credit based, I think. Yeah. And then the I cl- hate it the with venues. these comedians that got big in the pandemic online. And I then know. Just... It's really they sold. Who out. do they think they are? They really sold out. I think. People really get upset at that, though, right? Yeah, yeah. I am. what are you triggered (laughs) (laughs) sort of a self-hate thing yeah uh no no no, but like but that is a thing that people get upset about right like i uh, oh for sure yeah i and i see it so like no i think that's good Mm. i don't know to have young people coming out to want to watch comedy Mm. just seems good overall right I, I uh. think so. Yes, there is just like getting people out and just getting people like used to live performance again is always good. But tell me what you think about this. I think that if there are people that like maybe they didn't do stand up before, but then they found like an audience online and now they're trying to do stand up, either they're going to figure it out and they're going to get really good or audiences are going to wise up and realize, oh, this person is not a good live performer and eventually they're not going to keep coming out. So in a, in a way, I'm almost not worried because I think it's going to just even out as it should. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bo it was a famous YouTuber and then yeah. like was like, 
And there were plenty of famous YouTubers at that time who tried to do live comedy we don't know about or can't remember yeah. or never heard of even exactly. in the first place. Um, yeah. And he was just like, I want to be good at this thing. And exactly. He was. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and I guess the worry from people is that audiences will come out and then like be like, oh, this is what live comedy is. This sucks. I'm never coming back out. And it's like, that's just not how it also people assumes work. such a snail mindset from people yeah. that people's mm. brains are like too inches thick and they're going to see one live bad performance and be like, yeah. all comedy is the worst all the time. And I'll tell you, if anybody does believe that, let them not come back to comedy. They yeah, 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 yeah. Dumb. yeah, that's true. I will yeah. say, unfortunately, there are a lot of people online that have like approached me and like from like the way they talk, I'm like, Oh yeah, you're not that bright. Just like the way they talk about like I don't they don't seem to have like a lot of insight. Like a lot of people are, are very dumb. Do you mean like TikTok personalities? Like fellow No, TikTok? I'm talking about like followers, unfortunately. Like the people who are watching this. Uh, and people like the people who are watching this. this. The and, stupid yeah. fans. Yeah. Well, no, but even like my username is like Lucas T. Arnold because like Lucas Arnold was taken. But so many people are like Luca and like your name is Lucas Starnold, right? And I'm like, that's not a name, dude. <laughs> that's a pretty cool name, though. It's honestly. not Lucas Starnold. Yeah. Lucas Starnold. No, yep. genuinely, so many people I, I was and I would say, hey, my name is Lucas. And they're like, what? I thought it was I was like, did you not go to my profile to see just my name? And he was like, oh, I never thought to do that. Yeah. <laughs> just people a don't. lot of people that like they don't make a lot of leaps of thought. That's true. I love them, but you're dumb. <laughs> Lucas, Luca Starnold. You yeah. ever hear the book Star Girl? Oh, I read that in middle school. Star Girl? Yeah, it's about a quirky girl who decides her name is Star Girl. <laughs> oh. Big fan of that, right? Kind of sounds. Did they make it a movie or something? I they did they make did. it a movie. Yeah, they made yeah. it a movie. With Grace Vanderwall, who was on uh, America's Got Talent. Oh, doing what? Uh, she was she acts starring <laughs> yeah oh, starring can you yeah just act on and America's Got Talent and girling wait it. can you literally go to America's Next or Got Talent and just do a monologue you can do anything I think she I think How she they was will a roast yeah. were you on America's Got Talent no, no I okay. would never never but because I have a friend who was and it was a miserable experience for him really well, that I, is yeah. it possible for you to say sense. this friend's name or no uh I I you don't would no but like let's come up I'm, with a name. I would, Barack his, Obama. So your friend his, Barack Obama my went on. My friend, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my friend Danny. <laughs> okay. Sure, my friend Danny, Danny uh, went on America's Got Talent and was just doing regular stand up, stand up that does well at shows and stuff. And just the audience fucking turned on him, started just booing. Just booing. And he's like, oh, no. he's like a theater full of people just going boo at you while like. Howie Mandel and like uh, who's who's the lady Heidi Klum are just like pressing eh, oh, eh, those giant X's is like the most miserable fuel. experience you could possibly have oh, and he Jesus. just like walked off stage in a daze and was just like oh my god and then they they were like the producer was like we're not gonna put that in like don't worry like I'm sorry that happened in. and then of course they, they put it in there <laughs> I knew of course oh, they edited god. it into the show assholes. yeah how is Danny doing now in terms of like performance tickets? He's doing great. He's, okay, he's, great. he's great. And I, I've encouraged him to like talk about this story because I think it's also like pretty funny. You know, it's like it's a experience not everybody is, yeah. gets and it's like very real. And, yeah. you know, you only see the positive side of America's mm -hmm. Got Talent when you think about it yeah. in that way. But um, I don't know. It's it's probably still a traumatic experience. For oh, yeah. for sure. Would you be are, are you opposed to doing America's Got Talent for th because of that story that happened to Danny or for another reason? Um, what other reason would there be? Well, that maybe sucks. like an ideological thing, that. like this is not how you get. Well, the, some this people is not don't right believe way. America's talent. Ever think of that? <laughs> I love putting him in a bind. Yeah. I love the, I love the part of improv where it actually shuts down the scene. <laughs> sure, yeah. I think the funniest thing I think one of the reasons I stopped doing improv was because ultimately the funniest thing you can do in an improv scene is say no <laughs> and like that's the thing yeah. they teach you not to do right <laughs> say no but I, it's funny i only did improv very briefly in college and i would always be in the back trying to think of something funny yeah, yeah. Me too. and then i come out and say the funny thing and then that would be the scene ender and it's like oh, that's not okay. that's not what improv is <laughs> <laughs> so you're just like i'm gonna come up with a, a banger of a closer <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. all <laughs> yeah what did you study in college uh, I dropped out, but I studied uh, creative writing. Oh. 
in a small college in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. What made you want to drop out? Was it doing comedy? I hated college so Mm. much. Didn't want to go in the first place. Parents convinced me. Mm. They were wrong. (laughs) I had already had a taste of stand-up. So I wanted to go out and do that. Yeah, nice. And I shouldn't have gone to college in a small town, but it was, it made more financial sense in my mind and that teenage kid's mind yeah. of going there as opposed to going somewhere else where I'd get like better scholarships or whatever in like a bigger city. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I, I was kind of stupid about college and it all, it all worked out fine. Right? I, yeah. I don't think you're as stupid about college at all because like I, I ended up graduating college, but I remember at the end of high school thinking I just had this gut feeling of like, I don't want to do more school. Mm. This doesn't feel like a thing I want or I even necessarily need, but I knew there was, I, I just knew there was no way for me to do life without going to, I just, I couldn't imagine a world where I dropped out or didn't do college at all. Right. I that, only yeah. saw a world where I didn't go to college. Yeah. I wanted to move to Austin. As soon as I graduated high school, I wanted to move to Austin work at target i don't know why i thought i was like i want to work at target <laughs> and did you and do comedy and then i did after i dropped out i meandered about a bit and then i ended up in in austin you must be one of the, the only target, target am- cafe oh <gasps> what was that like i don't even know the target How honestly you know? like i have no fond idea. memories of it but it, by the end i hated it i oh. was like yeah dealing with people sucks what's the worst thing that happened at the target cafe um just the concept i guess <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't really think of anything specific. It, it's such a it's so long ago now, but mm. um, I just clean cleaning the dishes sucked. Yeah, oh yeah, closing was like the worst because close. If I closed, not only did it was it just a shitty f- job to have. You're just there scrubbing butter out of the popcorn machine to like ten, but it's like it meant that I couldn't do stand up that night. Like it meant oh, that I couldn't yeah. do an open mic, so I would like tell them like, please try to schedule me as many opening and mid shifts as possible and they're right. like yeah but sometimes you got to close because we're all no one wants to close i'm like this sucks um but I, it's a job whatever i am curious though like you must have been one of the only employees at target who actually had target as a goal <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah yeah like it everyone's was, yeah. like i ended up here like this is my dream <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't know why i guess just like the town i'm from that was just like the job that was easy and i don't know yeah just very available to you i guess yeah. so i don't know i don't know why i thought target i like mm. target i get it i used to dream about being a bartender oh i really? used to be like i want to bar. i want to like i didn't end up doing it because i think i i like went to bartending school and then i got a job in like production so i was like i'm not gonna bartend because it's i already have like a day job but mm. it was something where i was like i get to talk to people i get to be around alcohol because like that felt so cool to me and I guess alcohol is pretty cool. Alcohol is like, it's pretty sick. Kids, you do alcohol? <laughs> uh, not right now, actually. Oh, yeah. dry January, February, it's February. <laughs> Fuck, I keep forgetting. Actually, could I have uh, some more coffee? Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Put a little something extra in it. No, hey, can I just have regular? Thank you. What uh, what made you want to like stop drinking Sorry, for a while? Um, just was barreling towards death. No, nah, but it's uh, <laughs> I I need I need to take a break. Yeah. But yeah, we don't have to talk about that. What were we saying before? <laughs> bartender. What, what were we saying? Target? Bartending? You were, you, yeah, you wanted to be a bartender, but decided against it. Yeah, well, I mean, I also took a break from drinking earlier this year. Oh, wow. So, I mean, we don't have to talk Still about Still currently it, but... happening? Um, My new philosophy, and this is kind of stupid, is uh, when I drink, it's in an effort to like be drunk. It's I think what I used to do is I would like have like the glass of wine at dinner or like a gin and tonic before a show. And I was like, this is kind of slowing my body down. Oh, but like I don't hate drinking. Um, I don't like it as much as drugs, but I don't hate it. (laughs) Uh, So I was kind of like, well, you know, if I'm going to drink, I'm going to be doing nothing that night. And I understand that the night is a wash. Interesting. If that makes sense. Sure. Kind of. For yeah, for me, if it just like runs like its course, and then I like sober up, I'm like good, and I can mm. stay up late and everything. Um, I but my I would drink a full drink, but anytime I would go on stage, like before going up, for a little while there, mm. especially like after pandemic, I I really saw it happening. Wow. I was just like I would just maybe not a full, but I would definitely like get me a drink. I'm nervous. Let me like take the edge off a little mm. bit. I go up. 
I'd, you know, do my thing. And then afterwards I'd be like, well, all right, I can, I have another extra drink ticket might as well. So it's like to any time I'm doing a show to have two drinks, it's like that shit was starting to add up. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. We're and, in bars I, all the time. It was, it was good for me to know that I'm like, oh yeah, I can just like, I used to do it, go up with no alcohol at all. And now I'm, you know, let, let me try, let me try to do that again. Cause it was <laughs> kind of. That's a crutch. Yeah. It That's is, not good. Yeah. I, from the beginning, I was, I knew that I'm alcohol would make, for, go for it. You boys have boy talk. Okay. <laughs> All right. I knew from like the very beginning that if I were to drink before a show that it would make me more, uh, less nervous and probably more comfortable on stage. Like I have occasionally uh, done open mics where I got accidentally a little too tipsy and it was always <laughs> really fun on stage it yeah yeah really, and it even like come up with new lines and stuff because i'm just naturally like a little bit looser you're and looser stuff. you're more confident yeah, yeah you're yeah, braver yeah. yeah and that i find occasionally i don't know mike may be a little bit helpful there's a time and a place for yeah it. yeah a time and a place to like dip into it sure my little t- yeah but for a show i was like oh no i never because i know i could become dependent on it yeah for like finding that center and people have and people do. And, exactly. And I don't want to be that. Yeah. Good. That's yeah. good. I don't want to end up like you. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. No. Um, did you ever experiment with like, like, did you ever like smoke weed before going on stage? Because like, I know man, people... the cops are watching this. Dude. Oh, yeah. It's legal in New York. No. Most um, of my following are police officers. <laughs> I'm big in the constable community. <laughs> ACAC. All cops are cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, um Yeah, no, not not weed before. Okay. It, it makes me too uh anxious, paranoid. Yeah. I'm okay. not there although there was one time in Austin there was a show called Stone versus Drunk versus Sober. I think yeah. they tried to do it here in New York or something. Okay. I forget. Um but two comedians go up, stone. Yeah too drunk too sober and one time i did it stoned and within the context of them knowing that you smoked weed thank you um it was that was fun but doing smoking weed before stage oh i like it i some people it totally works for some people i've seen friends of mine just take giant vape hits before they go (laughs) up i'm like i could not i'd be i'd be too like freaking out like a joke would go bad i'd i'd get nervous stumble over a joke and and it would be bad and i would lose my mind interesting i i only did it once when i like just accidentally got too high before a show thank you 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 ever like you smoke with like your stoner friend who's buying whatever the nuclear factories are making you know (laughs) putting (laughs) like sure putting like you know radon in their joints and stuff Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get the idea. Fentanyl, yeah, that kind fentanyl, of thing. Fentanyl, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I smoked a ton of fentanyl. And I don't remember anything after that. <laughs> uh, I smoked weed and then I like, I was like, uh, I have an hour before this set. I'll be fine. But I was not fine. I was like still really high. And I went up and I found it was like kind of nice. I was able to like sit in the jokes a little more. Yeah. Like kind of watch the audience and connect with them more. I think it totally works for some people, and, yeah. uh, it, but not for me. Yeah, I get, yeah. I get, I get. What's your, uh, what's your anxious. thing of choice before a se- before a show now? Well, now it's just, um, just sobriety, so, just being sober, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just sitting in a blank room and just staring into space. Yeah. Uh, I love that. If I could watch paint dry, that'd be good. No, oh, um, we'll definitely cool. watch paint dry. I, I still, you know, one of the old superstitious things that I had was writing down my set before I went up anytime. Mm. Yeah, but, I do but that, that. So it's like a superstitious thing, and that's what alcohol became, and that was bad. Right. So it's like, oh, I'm not going to do well unless I have a beer. Or it's like, oh, if I'm doing bad, at least I'm like kind of like tipsy, and I can be like, ah, fuck it. I can just like, you know, that that was not mm. good. But um, did you writing ever- writing physically writing it in my set list down right is good. The reason I do that, like writing out my set list before, is because I want to try to write it out so that it helps me remember the order of what I'm planning. For sure. Exactly. Was that ever an issue for you? Like forgetting jokes on stage or? Yeah. All the time. I have really bad memory. Really? Yeah. Or like memorization skills. Mm. Oh, got it. Um, Because with my jokes, especially I work really hard on the wording. Yeah. Like to make, you know, like, like really like every word very like has a perp it's a little it's very orchestrated what very you do. yeah very, very yeah. written and so i feel like i'm trying to remember it exactly right um so the less i care the more i can be like okay that went all right and let me try again 
better the next time, but sometimes I would get in my head about it. So I used to really write shit out on set lists. I used to write these like tiny little set lists that mm-hmm. I would be able to hold in like my hand like oh, that. Yeah. 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 Never ri- written my shit on my hand though. Mm. Do you do that? I've I've never written on my hand. No. Yeah. What would you write? I mean, how would it even work? People like write it on like their like, like right there. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Their, uh, I only do that when I'm using thing. my uh, ventriloquist doll. <laughs> no. So yeah. I can see. Yeah. When your ventriloquist doll uses you, really, because that's really the mastermind. That's pretty, uh, pretty sensual. What you just said, <laughs> my ventriloquist doll using me. Uh, I was at a <laughs> mic recently, and uh, there was a gentleman whose name I don't remember. Who Jeff Dunham. Generous word. <laughs> he uh, he was a ventriloquist. Jeff yeah. Dunham. It was yeah. it was like Jeff Dunham. He came to the mic that's and Jeff. basically did Jeff Dunham for uh, four minutes. And uh, what was the puppet's name? I don't remember the puppet's name. Multiple puppets or one puppet? It was one puppet. Geraldo Rivera. The puppet <laughs> said a lot of a cool slurs. <laughs> but it was okay because the puppet said them. It said what? What did the a puppet say? A lot of slurs. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> the one, best ones. two, three. <laughs> the, the nice ones. The sweet, yeah. the sweet slurs. Uh, yeah. Against which groups of people? Um, gay people. Um, Disabled people. Oh. Um, I don't know that there were any racial slurs. I no. can't remember. I mean, I would. But well, he hit all the other. Well, boxes. then it's fine. Yeah, yeah, then it's great. I mean, the other groups, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Why do I care? What did he, the puppet look like? The puppet was um, like pretty a human? A, an old white, uh, balding dude. Kind like, like, like Walter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like Walter. Jeff Dunham's Walter. Yeah, kind of. I used to watch that... Jeff Dunham. I'm not proud of that, but I kind of, kind of like. How, how the, could you not like a more old time walking mouth? Yeah, he was. On he was puppet. one of the first comedians I saw. Real, yeah, me too. Like on Comedy Central or whatever. Like he, he was. was they great. were always. Yeah, he's talented. Yeah, he can really throw the voice. Like his mouth yeah. is not moving. Yeah. He's also a great singer. Like he he does a he lot. He, oh, he can <laughs> sing. Jeff Dunham. <laughs> yeah. When. I've seen, in like his doesn't he sing on in his I think shows? Yeah, there's like a Christmas album that he did or something. Mm. I don't know. It's it's absurd. He was he's rolling in it though. Oh yeah. Good for him. <laughs> can you sing like Jeff Dunn? Me? Yeah, no. can you give us a little taste? No. Can you give us a taste? No, I don't I don't I don't remember it that well. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Guys, stop it. I he's can't saying do it. he's saying no. Yeah. He's saying no and Guys, I'm really shy. You are very shy. That's yeah. true. That's why we do this podcast every yeah. week. Exactly. In my home where I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long have you been doing this podcast for? We've been doing this podcast for like two and a half years, but we've taken oh, like... Has it been that long? Something. Wow. Well, maybe not two and a half, but like September of 2020 is when we actually started. Okay. We yeah. were on Zoom That's for uh, a, for about a year. And then uh, 2021, September or October around there, we, started, we uh, invested in equipment to do this. How do you like it? We're um, towards the end. Uh, <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah, good. Yeah, well, it's great until the next thing. Mm. Yeah. What do you see the future of it being? Do you have like? I like that ideas? you're asking these questions. Yeah. Um. I'm well, curious. we we have a super cast now, which mm-hmm. is like Patreon but different. Oh. So if anyone's yeah. listening, you should subscribe. Please subscribe to our super cast. We're going to be posting exclusive content on our close friends ig story we're going to be doing ama see what we did we used that to plug sure yeah. your what's, earnest kind question yeah we, what's no that that's what it's, this is all about yeah <laughs> Capitalism. what's the difference between supercast and patreon they're basically the same yeah okay yeah. patreon different. is like more general whereas supercast is like it's i think it's like this added sort of like subscription service from our new uh podcast distributor oh okay. so it's like an added level where you can like subscribe for extra content. Who's the podcast distributor? Uh, it's Acast. Acast. Okay, I'm yeah. familiar yeah. with Acast. Mm. How long you have you been A-Cast with them? Head? Big Acast head. <laughs> I met somebody who worked for Acast. Um, mm. and he seemed nice, so I'm gonna say the whole company's cool. <laughs> yeah. Based on one person who works for them, who I thought was nice. <laughs> What's your favorite podcast distributor? And name um, all of them. Probably Acast. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, right. Although there's some other good ones out there. <laughs> Yeah, like what? But how long have you been with Acast for? <laughs> well, we just we signed with Stand Up New York, who has a podcast network now, and they're helping yes. us out, and they're amazing. Oh wait, so they're working together, kind of. You're, yeah, you're yeah, with yeah, both yeah. of them. They work with Acast, and then we've been brought onto gotcha. their network. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah, 
I mean, honestly, goals of the podcast are like for me personally, if we're talking meta, we're doing inside baseball. Like I feel like this is a really amazing exercise in just like talking to new people, especially like, I don't know. I don't want to be weird, but like people like you who I'm like a little intimidated by because I think you're really good at comedy. Um, yeah. And uh, I think it's you like, should be. Yeah, I that's mean, what I was thinking. I was like, he's about to say you're that. a scary guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're you a should, scary guy. You should fucking be intimidated right now. Yeah, you should be shaking in your fucking boots right now. I'm yeah. quivering. I'm, I'm, about about a, I'm quivering I'm like I got my first it. dose of Pfizer. What do y'all think about those people? <laughs> I love them. Do you I, think they're faking oh. it or they're like mentally unwell and believe it? <laughs> Oh, I don't think those are the only two options. Okay, what are what do you think it is? Oh, I think it's one of those two. I th- what if what if it's actually real? What what if <laughs> <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I genuinely think? I think there may be because like everybody's body is different. I think there may have been one person who genuinely had a horrible reaction and then other people are like be maybe out of like anxiety think they have it see yeah it's like okay a, that's it's like um psychosomatic i think it's thing. psychosomatic i think they psych themselves out I, I maybe i was being a bit reductive when i said mentally and well but that's what i mean like if, if they but that is like how dare you reduce those people i mean you know i like want you to dare i want you to go people th- are believing it like yeah you know the mind is powerful it's almost as powerful as Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> nothing could be as powerful as Pfizer. Yeah, nothing. They've got the they've got the chip in us. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How do you feel about being uh, microchipped? Uh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> fun. You like knowing the government cares. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe in the hoax, but I got my microchip just so I could perform a union hall. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that as like a way to get outreach? Like, hey, I'm over at Union Hall. Don't uh, buy a ticket, by the way, FBI. <laughs> what? As a way to, that's like an added benefit of being microchipped is that they just know where you are. Like, oh, we should go to the venue. Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. They're tracking me to, to yeah, my shows. Exactly. Yeah. You can follow, you You should put it in your link tree, the tracker link. Oh, oh God. <laughs> so that everybody am. knows where you are. Yeah. Can I ask? Have you, from like your Kimmel appearance or any other appearances, have you been recognized on the street? And if so, how have they gone? Uh, I get recognized more for shows mm. in the city. Nice. Wow. Um, like um, just local, like, hey, I saw you the other night. You were really funny. Oh, that's awesome. And that, that happens a fair amount, which makes me feel good every single time. Beautiful. It makes me feel awesome validated I okay i need it i crave it mm-hmm. i mean when when you walked into this apartment i recognized you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's what i mean it's it's like friends of mine <laughs> yeah like, hey martin how's it going i was recognized i don't talk so to when them, your family sees you and they know who you are yeah, 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 yeah. Must feel yeah. Pretty every good. time i go back home the, i get recognized by this by bitch my, called mom my, mama, my dad my tias i get recognized all the time at home <laughs> Uh, what is your before we go to listener submissions where you're going to oh. give some wacky advice yeah okay. uh, what's your relationship with your family like great all right let's go ahead and get into <laughs> it is they like, good it have is they good. seen and if so like your comedy uh i don't think they necessarily get get it completely but they okay. get it enough i think they like liked my kimmel set they could see the they could see that it was something nice um, okay they really like the biggest things. The biggest thing was an uh, acting role I had in a show called This Fool that came out uh, like last year, uh, last summer, August, something like that, um, on Hulu. This comedian named Chris Estrada, who's an LA comedian, very okay. funny, he has a show out and had me as a small role on one of the episodes. And people came out of the woodworks to tell me, like, Oh, I was just watching the show and you came up. This is awesome because it's, I think, uh, like one of the few Latino centric shows out there. So just everybody from my hometown watched it. And so all my family is super proud of that. And my parents fucking love that show. And so they're like, you were great in it. That would a funny show. Like, that's awesome. Uh, that's bit They can understand things like that, mm. which is nice. And, and I, mm. I try to when I'm doing my stuff, I'm not trying to pander to only like the cool the coolest comedians who get it i'm like no i want my parents to at least have the tools to understand what i'm doing and like enjoy enough of it and like oh that was like interesting that was weird or that those are some funny jokes you know i'm I'm not trying to um be too whereas maybe at one point in my past i would have been a little like i'm i'm you know i'm 
too cool for so you have to be super yeah. smart to get my shit and i'm like oh, no, you know, i'm yeah. trying to i'm trying to make it smart but accessible right no you're in um, your pandering stage you're, you're going to be pandering to the masses i mean that's i thought about i'm going to run this by you. i thought about like starting a podcast um called don't do that called pandering to the alt-right what do you think about <laughs> that? Just, great it's a great actually, idea do do that <laughs> <laughs> that is wait are you gonna actually try to get like an alt-right fan and just really try to sell out and say that i'm scared to be i've been canceled and i'm scared of being canceled <laughs> the woke mob trying to put me down and then just like such promote like do. pills or something whatever they do <laughs> whatever they do on that man definitely shit. do it by the way by the way um in terms of voiceover work before we get into our listener submission i actually did the voiceover for one of those pill commercials really i legit did when 2014 no not 2014 <laughs> no um it was uh i think it was like 2018 what pill i don't know if i can say you can say it's all right <laughs> I give you permission. <laughs> what does it rhyme with? Um, the Schmiel Schmed Schmil Schmuss. I don't know it. The real know. red pill plus. <gasps> what? What is that? You got red pilled? What is this? What? <laughs> it was on Alex Jones. No! How all right, how much did it pay? So little. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. How much? I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can actually say okay, that. Okay, you don't have to. Wait, yeah. um, nothing you're not Why comfortable did I have with. A but thought about Alex Jones, where I was like, did he die? Oh he, no no no. Um, because I'm thinking he, I'm thinking of Rush Limbaugh. He was he died in the eyes he died in the eyes of the public. But, oh, um, so he got like no, no no he didn't no he, <laughs> no, he got canceled. I, speak for yourself. He got canceled. yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, Alex shows yeah, he got canceled by the woke mob. <laughs> the reason I did it is because I it was just like an audition that I found online. It didn't say what it was for. It was just like, oh, it's a medical supplement commercial. I was like, sure. I can audition for that. Then yeah. I booked it and I was like, cool. I'm like a very new into the world of voiceover. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm reading the script and it says, find out more at InfoWars. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It was exactly like that. And then you just did and it. And I was like, ah, I got to do it. And it was money at the time. Yeah, it's, a little, yeah. yeah. All right. Paid for everything you see around. <laughs> no, but yeah, well, send, that, uh, send me the link after this. I tried looking for it. I couldn't find it. Oh. I really looked for it. You looked out, oh. and I and uh, genuinely, I invite anyone to look for it. I have tried to find it. I have not been able to find it. If you guys can find it, anyone right. watching or listening, you're more than welcome to it and send it to me. Is there a pill commercial you're most excited to do in your life? Yeah, Super Red Pill Plus. <laughs> yeah, is that what it's called? The real red. The real pill red pill. Uh, no, mine's different. Okay. <laughs> the super red pill oh, the super is one. much yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's it that one's played by Henry Cavill. Do you remember any of the parts in it? Like Not the, at all. Uh, like the they, what did I, it, what did it do? I don't remember. <laughs> it's just like some sort of like boost, like your mental performance, your physical. Ah. It was it was very vague. Boost everything in your life. Sure. It was like yeah, that was yeah. Don't undersell it. <laughs> I'm sure it really works. <laughs> All right, let's see, yeah. what, let's see what listeners had to say. <laughs> and get the... No, please don't get <laughs> Do not get the red pill. Okay, so we have one listener submission and then people wrote in with things. Oh, actually, first, can you rank your top five white women for us, please? Oh, that's a great question. I couldn't even tell you one that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fair. Oh. You, you ever date one? Yeah. <laughs> uh... Not one you liked. <laughs> Maybe, and I just am I'm anti-white women all the way. Yeah. Sorry, Gabby. Uh, yeah. It's a shame. Sorry. No. Is there anyone that you're like, I'll, I'm, I'm okay with you? Uh, Marjorie Taylor Green. Yeah. Uh, is really cool. Um, but still, you know, she she sucks. Um, for uh, just because she's a woman. Yeah. yeah. That's true. But I like everything else about her. Yeah. <laughs> um. She she heckled the president recently. Oh, she did. Was, I didn't. Oh, at the I State of the Union. I haven't caught up with her in a spell. What happened? <laughs> yeah. And she was wearing a really good coat with like this fur. Oh, she hood. was serving. It was. Yeah, you it should was talk to cool. her about it. You yeah, should have well, her on your podcast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wonder if I could get people. I, I don't. I don't like the idea of bamboozling people, even mm. people who suck. Um, not that she sucks. Um, she's really cool. Um, love Marjorie. Um, love Marjorie. Um, 
I, want, I don't know. I don't know the. It, it, it makes me uncomfortable the idea of having to like talk to some yeah. some people like that. But I, I think it would be interesting. I, I think it just means you're a good person. You don't want to actually try to deceive people. Like you do it for a bit, but not in real life. You yeah, wanna... it's just different to me. But some people do it well, and and I think it's like mm. funny. Uh, I don't know. We'll do see. you like I'll, Sasha Baron I'll Cohen? Think, and like yeah, what he, yeah. yeah. I love like great. Nathan Fielder and stuff, even though that's a bit different. But mm. um, what do you think about Nathan Fielder? Yeah. Love him. Oh. I never Obsessed. got into him. I have not oh. seen enough of him to oh. to have, really like. Have you tried watching Nathan for you, and you're just like not for you, <laughs> not for you? Well, yeah. <laughs> was that an unintentional or uh, completely unintentional? Oh yeah. wow, yeah. it would have. I would <laughs> have, have sold of comedy. Uh, no, I I remember watching and thinking this is amazing, but then I just got. I, I'm, I strongly think I may be like ADHD because I just immediately will get distracted by whatever else I'm doing. And then it just goes out of sight, out of mind. But not because it's like making you uncomfortable. Not just, at all. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Cause I, I know that's it. something, some that happens to some people. It's like, yeah. they're like, Oh, this, I just cringe too much. I can't. And I'm like, Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. But okay. Fair One enough. of the funniest things I have ever seen online is when he, um, he, he made a video for this kid whose dog died and he gets like an Asian man to do the voice of his dog. He's like, it's me, Maddie. I'm in heaven now. So sorry I died. And then the kid starts (laughs) crying. Why does he sound like that? (laughs) Yeah. It's, yeah. That is one of the funniest things I have ever seen. (laughs) I know I would love the show. But yeah. Do you have a favorite Nathan for you episode? Ooh, that's a good question. Mm. Fuck. I don't no, no. Do you have one? Yes, Which the one? web. The web. Oh, that's solid. Yeah, that's oh, really good. My favorite. With the Johnny Depp impersonator and all oh that. Oh my god. I yeah, that's good. Wait, it's like he basically, um, in order to help a souvenir shop, he he pretends that there's like a film set at the souvenir shop, and he tells people that they're gonna be in the movie <laughs> if they buy something. But then a lawyer is like, "That's illegal unless you make an actual movie." <laughs> so he cuts together five minutes of a real movie of this footage with a Johnny Depp impersonator. <laughs> it's so good. And I think that Johnny Depp impersonator. Is from Brownsville, Texas. Whoa! I think I know a there from is school? a friend from school's brother or like cousin. I think brother. That's incredible. Is a Johnny oh Depp God. impersonator, and I want to say I looked at the credits, and at one point in my life, I might be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Mm. Isn't that wild? From Brownsville. Look mm. at that. That is your so favorite Nathan cool. Free episode. Beautiful. And the one I'm remembering is the toy episode incredible. of Nathan for You. Yeah. There's a a toy maker who made like some shitty toy that sucks called the was it the doink it i think yeah the I think doink so. it. Yeah. and he just like has like a bad attitude about the show which mm-hmm. is like fun for like nathan fielder to be able to like play with and one of my favorite lines is he does a lot of like those um like voiceovers like like he'll like edit the footage together and then do a voiceover on top of it so he gets to say he gets final word which i always think is funny mm-hmm. um and he's like, he tells the guy you know um Oh, this toy doesn't seem very funny. He's like, yeah, you don't seem very fun. You saw it. He's like, oh, wow. Talking to Mark was like, uh, it was about as much fun as playing with one of his toys. So I went, you know, it's just like, it's just like roasting him. And he gives him like a bobblehead at the end of it. And, oh, and the bobblehead so just says, I, I'm Mark. I'm a, I'm a stupid idiot. I don't know what, how to make toys. I'm the laughing stock of my industry. And it's like so brutal to this man. I, I love it. Oh. Beautiful. Uh-huh. Okay, trying to remember all that. We have a uh, listener submission that we would like to run by you. That oh, I'm I'm so excited for this. Oh okay. yeah, all right. Oh yeah. When I've been looking, uh, when I've been looking at porn recently, I've been looking more for men jacking off or using dildos, sure. as well as pegging. And now Pornhub thinks I'm a gay man, even though I'm not a man. And if it doesn't think I'm a gay man, it recommends videos of straight dudes jerking off next to each other, not making eye contact or facing each other at all, which is just something I thought you guys would find funny. Anyway, the way I see it, my options are to become a gay trans man or ask you guys to find better porn. And I'm lazy, so it should be obvious what I picked. Love the idea of not transitioning because you're lazy. Oh, that is so much work. (laughs) I love that as as a reason you give. (laughs) That's beautiful. What what do you think? It is labor intensive. What do I think about what? <laughs> it seems like they're just, just sharing a story. Just a just a cool guy. <laughs> just a or, real or fun. Cool, a cool, pr- a cool gal, cool, cool person. person. Yeah. 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 
Mm-hmm. Do you think? Yeah. How, do you think they should uh, look for something different in their porn searches? I don't understand the problem here. I think the yeah, problem no is. Um, I think it's perceiving what Pornhub thinks of their this Pornhub person. algorithm is confusing to them. Yeah. So they have like an account. I guess. Or may, do y'all have Pornhub, Pornhub accounts? accounts? I don't have an account. I don't have an account. No. I don't have an account. That <laughs> seems like I just log in as a guest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Continue as guest, please. Yeah. I yeah, I don't uh I, I, I don't understand this person on that level, on that fundamental yeah. level of can, enough for Pornhub to be like, here here's what you might like. I'm like, yeah. how do you get that far? I mean, can Pornhub not just, like, recommend stuff to you just based on, like, your history? I, I say this as if I've never been on the website. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, no. Yeah, they, no, right? They, I use I use a thing called incognito mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That it's a thing. fresh experience every time. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me. Don't show me my history. Most watch. <laughs> Recommended for you. Nah, yeah. get, get out of here. <laughs> not because you're hiding it's because you just <laughs> want to be surprised yeah yeah i'm gonna start watching netflix what I want. on incognito show mode. me what yeah. today's specials are <laughs> yeah <laughs> this the delights yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah i want the house wine yeah, yeah. just will... most recently uploaded that's all i want <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no matter what it is Whatever. just whatever's been the most recently uploaded i just want to see what's ago. on the cutting edge what yeah. you want to get it on the ground floor yeah, of everything yeah. <laughs> i think uh oh. If you actually do want better pornography, there are sites that are just better mm. than Pornhub. I feel like Pornhub. Name Hub's one. Name some recommendations. <laughs> um, ever heard of oh Supercast? God. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, ever heard of Super? Who knows yeah. Supercast? Supercast. Who knows what we'll get up? To? Really good pornographic yeah. content on there. Straight guys jerking off <laughs> next to each other, <laughs> and they do not make eye contact. Have you guys ever uh, jerked off next to a friend? I've never once, no. I never have, but you know what? I remember like reading like a book about like so, there was a, somebody, uh, this book called Dirtbag Massachusetts by this guy named Isaac Fitzgerald, and it's sort of like memoir type stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I, uh, he was talking about doing that when he was like in high school or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I know like the Beatles d- talked about doing it too. Yeah. And every time I hear story, like I'm like, oh, that just sounds nice. Like the bros <laughs> hanging out. Like, what a great bond, way to connect. Like, what a bonding yeah. experience. I didn't do that, but good for them. You know, it's hard to find a group activity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some people do rock climbing. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever uh, jerked off with a friend? Yeah, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't like we were making no eye contact. It wasn't platonic. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It was uh, fraught with lust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then I, in my mind, I'm like, that's not a friend. That's a that's yeah. a lover. It that's was different. because I, I was next to my friend, and I was too nervous to like actually make a move oh, on her. Yeah. So I was like, I kind of friend zoned myself, which is pretty stupid. I was mm. like, let's do this together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, I Did like. Did you ever make it out of the friend zone? <sighs> I feel like by the time I did, that was, I was, a, that was a pregnant pause. Good right question. There. Yeah. By the time I did, I was no longer like interested. You wow. know what I mean? Yeah, you're like, straight now. <laughs> yeah, now I'm straight. Yeah. And thank God, let me tell you, life is a lot easier this way. Yeah, being yeah. straight is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you got the sauce. <laughs> you got whatever it takes. What's your favorite thing about being straight? Hmm. Uh, just like it's. Life is just so easy for me. Yeah. It's like really great. <laughs> what do you like most about being straight? My favorite is that uh, everyone is straight. That's my favorite thing about <laughs> it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you just... all watch uh, Bohemian Rhapsody? Like, oh, the yeah. The Queen movie? The, the Queen movie, yeah. I yeah. didn't see it. I uh, love a fictitious film. I no. liked I liked it because it was uh, they made Freddie Mercury straight, and I thought that was an interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm really I'm really relieved about that. Because there were all these rumors floating around about him. And I'm yeah. glad they squashed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah and I was nice. worried for him. I was like, I don't want, you know, like bad press about someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no. glad he uh, defeated the allegations. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, one of our listeners. Another king out on top. <laughs> <laughs> A straight king. <laughs> Another straight king. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Martin. Yeah. One of our listeners wants you to comment on um, lasagnas in a loaf pan. Are we pro? Are we against? I don't even know what that means. You can make small lasagnas in like a bread loaf pan. I have never. I didn't realize worked. we were scraping the bottom of the barrel with, <laughs> with our listener submission. <laughs> yeah, I feel 
feel like we didn't show up with our best. Is there anyone that's like opposed to that? Like vehemently opposed to a loaf pan being used for lasagna? I don't even think I would clock it. Like if I was eating a lasagna, I'd be like, this is made with a fucking loaf pan. What the fuck is like? I would never. Yeah, I guess I never... conceptually, it's more like uh, making it. Hmm. Right or just yeah, eating it's it. like you you make the thing in the loaf pan. See, I've never made a lasagna in my life. Mm. Me neither, actually. I've never worked with a loaf pan. Should I start? Should I make some lasagna you right can now? Do lasagna. Yeah, let's do it right now. Yeah. Let's have some lasagna right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. Oh, we're doing improv. Who, okay. Who is it? Anonymous submissions or is it? Can you? No, see there's who? a person who. Right. Well, most of them are anonymous submissions, yeah. but in this case, we just asked on Instagram, "What should we talk about with Martin Urbano?" And, uh, and who said that? Somebody. Let me see their name. Let's. It call was, them out right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's call them. <laughs> should their, we call them well, on yeah, Instagram? But, but, yeah, yeah. Let's go well, Instagram live on this shit. <laughs> let's see. I gotta scroll. I gotta scroll. Kind of. Uh, kind of far down because we're, a, we're a well-liked content. brand um <laughs> oh somebody I, I actually can't find it anymore but somebody named queen natalie shout out to queen natalie responded which half of the black and white cookie is better <laughs> parentheses be careful <laughs> oh be careful perfect question for queen natalie that's really funny that's good yeah. that's solid uh nothing really there to uh add to it <laughs> you know not good for conversation, but yeah, um, a fun, funny joke. It's which half of the black and white cookie is yeah. the? Uh, I would say the bottom half. Oh, controversial. That was a good. That was a good answer. Yeah, a workaround. That's little, yellow. Little All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. Should we get to our final segment? We should do it indeed. Uh, for our final segment, we have a thing called Self Perception Corner, where we ask our guests to describe the ways in which they believe. They are perceived by other people, and then we say how we actually perceive you. Yeah, how do you think the world sees you? Oh, this is such a weird, confronting question. Yeah. Um, makes me uncomfortable. Um, yeah, I actually have no idea how people perceive me. Okay. I, I really, I really don't know. Mm. Take a gander. Well, who? Because lots of people perceive people me in lots love. of different ways. Yeah. And people who Listen, love you. People, people you regularly uh, enjoy seeing in, in life. Close friends, maybe. Oh. This is uh, kind of freaking me out right now to think <laughs> this hard about things. I try not to think that hard about how I'm perceived. Yeah. Um, because I think the more I think about it, the less uh, healthy it is for me personally. That's that is a very um, healthy, very very fair. It's a very healthy way to go through the world. Um, you know, because I have hopes of what I want, but then the reality might be different from my hopes, and maybe my hopes are a little bit um, um, self-serving, um, and and me wanting to be perceived as this. It's this is too heavy of a question. I understand. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. The well, answer good is thing I we don't only know. have really heavy answers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I perceive you as a funny freaking guy, mm-hmm. funny mm-hmm. little guy. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I see. I perceive you as someone who is one wildly talented, but it it also like I found it very encouraging to see that you actually had the confidence very young to actually trust your own abilities and your skill to pursue something and go against the grain a little bit the way you said like you like dropped out of college even though your parents were like sort of gearing you very much like no please do go to like you were very much you know how to trust yourself and trust your gut in a way that i find very very impressive in a way that i think is matched by every single time i have ever seen you on stage where you just destroy Mm -hmm. i'm just i'm in awe of and i have been from the moment i first saw you well this is really nice yeah You've uh, also I was been always very welcoming and kind anytime I've ever said hi to you in a way that I never Shut the expected. Fuck up. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank Someone's got to tell them. Yep. <laughs> I uh, have have doubts a lot, though. You know, like you talk about like being really confident early on, especially in recent years memory. Mm. Um, it's a lot of like, ah, oh, man, maybe I made the wrong fucking call. No. This shit's hard. This career is difficult. It is. A lot of people would be very, very, very sad if you stopped. Yeah. Uh, and that's the truth. Well, Not fuck them. You know? <laughs> yeah, fuck them. <laughs> Myself is what's more important and my uh, mental health. I-, I think it's all fine, but there have definitely been lots of moments where I'm like, maybe I 
I should have just fucking gone to school and like learned something. I could have gone to school and like learned how to write a script. Like you're you're talking about like taking these like film classes. Like those would have been very helpful. After I got Kimmel, like people asked, okay, we like those five minutes. What else do you have? And I was like, those five minutes. Why? Like what yeah. what do I need? And they're like, do you not have any scripts or something? I'm like, I don't know. How to. And so I try to write one. And the feedback I got was like, this is more like a sketch. I'm like, but is it funny? And they're like, yeah, it's funny. But like this isn't how you structure shit and story and character and all that mm. stuff. I've had to like learn myself. And I could have just like gone to a place where they specifically taught me how to do that. And then I could have used my brain to like turn shit on its head and stuff. So it's like a sometimes a regret that I have to be like, I should have gone to college. I should have used it as a tool. I should have made more of it. And then other times I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'm the best. So, you know, it really goes yeah. back and forth. I don't mm-hmm. know. Well, there's two things I appreciate and, and about you, not just in general. And uh, more things that we hate about you. <laughs> there's okay, a, I mean, there's a lot that I hate, but I'll sure, say the sure. things I like, which is one, I feel like a lot of people at your level in comedy, like don't talk to people at our level in comedy. And the fact that you're like willing to do this and willing to like talk and hang out after shows and like get coffee with young comedians, like speaks to your should character. I have, should I have not done this? Should I? I want to. I want to be seen. As, I mean, it's ill-advised. Cool like, Ill, I mean, this wasn't like a good choice. But I mean, like, no one we're glad you're here. I want the mystique. Your career that's is going to tank. Now. That's what's important for me. <laughs> is the perception that I'm too good for this shit? Yeah. yeah no, that's, that's I mean, that's how uh, we're we're we're, we're working to tear that down. <laughs> we're going to make sure no one thinks you're mysterious at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, second thing is, I like that like. You are a straight male comedian who is. I like that part. I like that you're a straight <laughs> yes, male yeah. comedian. I like that you're. Are, are some comedians not that? Um, hmm. I we mean, we don't talk about the untouchables. <laughs> com- comedians in quotes. <laughs> I like that you're willing to skewer those fucking assholes who like you see at mics and who make you feel like dead inside without being like a clapter guy. Because mm. I feel like the clapter comedians where it's like. And women do deserve rights. Like that is self-serving. I would never say that. <laughs> and I and I agree. But the way you say it is funny because it's satirical, but it's also like, yeah, those people do fucking suck. Yeah. But it's also like bringing us joy. You always go for the joke. You always stay on point, on yeah. target. You know where I, you previously worked. I think <laughs> there it is. Yay! I it. it I realized that it would be a lot more effective. Well, first of all, that's just like how my mind thinks um, in just like hard jokes all the time. Um, Brag. Okay. Th- I mean, it's a it's a curse that I've – it's a waking nightmare. Um, I Speaking their la- – making fun of them in their own language is the most effective thing, I think. Mm. Because then they can't just hide behind the, oh, you're just doing this or you're just doing that. I'm like, no, I'm li- I'm doing these hard punchlines that you say that that's what's more important. Um, that was a, yeah. 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 I, I do like that I try, strive for that and that mm-hmm. it's being seen that way is uh, validating. Indeed. That's awesome. Thank and you. would you please tell the people where they can see you do exactly this? Uh, and you where know, they can get notified about it online. Where, where can they find you? Um just like at, at at this supercast uh what, what's the what's the supercast link i think it's like a two nosy meerkats uh dot acast.com and then supercast.com as well yeah the same there. i think it's something like that say it to the camera for me so you can find martin at and then say all your shit <laughs> you can find martin urbano at <laughs> two nosy meerkats dot supercast.com hell yeah <laughs> yeah you know i'll hopefully be on the road at some point i don't know mm-hmm. i'm going to vermont in april if you're in vermont Ooh. nice going to uh bloomington and summer sometime i mm-hmm. think um yeah you know i'm around nice awesome beautiful lucas what's what's new for you where can people find you uh if you, they haven't found you already they've they found me already physically emotionally uh they're at the door, they uh, you can find me online at Lucas T. Arnold. Uh, no, excuse me, Lucas, Lucas Arnold. Starnold. Luca Lucas Starnold. Starnold. Make no mistake, that is my name. Um, yeah, uh, LucasStarnold.com. Uh, please sign up for my uh, mailing list. I've started a mailing list. Whoa. You can find the link uh, for it on my website, also at the link in my bio on all my socials. I am collecting information about where people are so I can give it to uh, the what census. What do you mean collecting I'm collecting info information, on where one, are. to give it to the census, but also so I can uh, send anthrax to your <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, um, it, like, let me know, like, what cities you're in so that I can hopefully do some dates uh, where you are. That's smart. Yeah, yeah. I know people are, are starting to do that. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking and I'm, it into their own hands. That's I'm great. I'm copying the idea entirely. So, no, yeah. that's great. Yeah, that's I'm doing that. Do so please uh, sign up for that uh, through anywhere that I'm online. You can find the link. Uh, it would help me a ton. Please do that. Uh, otherwise, I have shows coming up in New York. I have um, actually I'm putting together something at the Grizzly Pair in Midtown in April. What uh, is it? It's uh, it's it's. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a little later. It's just gonna be a fun little show with a lot of other comedians. <sighs> I'm gonna be on. Ooh. You may be invited. I don't know. Okay, I'm invited. I don't know. Can I join? Uh oh. I'm cat sitting. Oh, sorry. His name is Mr. Mittens. He's so cute. Oh, he's coming. He's on the lineup. He's, he's on the closer. lineup. <laughs> he, has pa- he has paws that yeah. are like white and the rest of his fur is black, which is really progressive. <laughs> which half do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, besides that, I have shows in March. Follow me. I'm putting up new clips every week. Nice. I'm learning to edit. Beautiful. And uh, other things. Hell so. yeah. Thank oh, you, yeah. Martin Urbano. Thank you, Martin Urbano. Thank you, Martin Urbano. Anytime. Yes. And uh, we will see you next week. Thanks for watching and listening. Please sign up for the uh, Supercast for Martin Urbano. Thank you, please. Thank you.